Welcome everyone, my name is Richard Herskowitz, I'm the director of the Ashland Independent Film Festival, and I'm going to guide you through tonight's unveiling of the 16th annual AIFF program. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, SLU for providing this venue. Um, for the Schneider Museum of Art, you'll hear a little bit more about our collaboration with them, the Digital Media Center, which helps us so much. I also want to thank Noble Coffee. Uh, they donate coffee to all um, our events and a dollar bag of what's purchased uh, during our box office period comes to the festival. Um, the box office is sponsored by Ashland Homenet and Project A. Thank you, Dina Matthews and Jim Tees. Our pre-sale box office is on the downtown plaza. Tickets begin um, going on sale uh, on March 20th for members. You can look at the back of your pocket guide and on our website for the dates and times we are open. Uh, the festival box office will be at the Varsity Theater starting April 6th. Uh, there, there's too many people to acknowledge. I just want to uh, acknowledge all of our sponsors, big and small, um, many of whom you saw uh, during the slideshow, our hardworking board, the Emeritus Board, the Advisory Council, all of you who are members, um, and you can purchase the membership in the lobby tonight, um, for which we're very grateful, and um, we very much need your support. All of our, our donors, thank you. I want to thank the programmers and screeners. What you're going to see tonight in the program is the product of an army of people who, uh, about 25 pre-screeners and seven associate programmers who work alongside me to narrow down the 800 plus submissions um, that uh, end up in our, our program. I also want to finally thank our staff. Um, I'm very grateful. I just want to single out um, Kathy Dombey, my predecessor as director, who came back this year to uh, provide development support. It's just been an invaluable uh, support. <laughs> uh, I want to just mention our wine initiative, and you'll hear a little bit more about that. You can see that down there. South Stage Sellers donates uh, grapes, and then the Weisinger Family Winery creates the wine. 100% of the proceeds go directly to AIFF. and you'll hear a little bit more about that at the end of the program when we do our, our raffle, so please stick around for that. And now, I'm going to begin the uh, whirlwind tour through this uh, program. Those of you who were here last year, uh, no, you, you should uh, buckle your seatbelts. Um, <laughs> there are uh, um, 40 feature films and over 60 shorts, and I'm, I, I can't go over everything, but I'm going to pull out some highlights. So let's get started. We, once again, are declaring independence. We are uh, emphasizing that we are the Ashland Independent Film Festival. And we emphasize um, independent film as a movement to transform mainstream culture, to promote voices and perspectives neglected by commercial media. And that's what we're all about. Now, um, we do this First, by honoring some of the uh, major independent film institutions that create the infrastructure that allow independent films to be seen, bringing them to our festival, to movie theaters, to other uh, media. And the first one this year we're honoring is the distributor Zeitgeist Films. Zeitgeist Films is responsible for your seeing the first films of people like Todd Haynes, Christopher Nolan, Guy Madden, Adam Agoyan, uh, and they, uh, they have supported these people who've gone on to become legends in uh, independent film. And uh, what they're going to uh, do this year, first of all, they're sending us their co-founder, Nancy Gerstmann, who'll be here uh, to present with the director their latest release, Harold and Lillian, A Hollywood Love Story. Uh, this is an absorbing account of the romantic and creative partnership of storyboard artist Harold uh, Michelson and film researcher Lillian Michelson. Uh, they're responsible for some of the um, most iconic examples of visual storytelling from The Birds to The Graduate, Rosemary's Baby, Fiddle on the Roof, and Scarface, etc. This is uh, a, a wonderful um, production. 
The second organization we're going to be honoring is Skylight. Now, Skylight is an independent production company devoted for over 30 years to making films and developing educational programs that strengthen human rights and social justice around the world. They're sending here their director, and the director of uh, virtually all of the Skylight films, Pamela Yates. She is a legend in the documentary film wor world. She won the Sundance Jury Prize for When the Mountains Tremble in 1984 and has three had three films nominated since. Coming with her will be Paco de Onis, um, the uh, producer of, um, of, of many of the Skylight films. And what they're going to present is the U.S. premiere of the Resistance Saga. Now, the Resistance Saga actually goes back to that first film I mentioned by Pamela Yates from 1983-1984, When the Mountains Tremble, uh, about Guatemala. And, uh, it, and after making When the Mountains Tremble, winning the Sundance Award, um, Pamela Yates went back in 2010 to film Granito, uh, how, to, um, uh, how to Nail a Dictator. And then this year, this just premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, she um, premiered 500 years. Um, and what happens in those films is that we find out that the footage that she shot of Rios Montt, the dictator of Guatemala in 1983, became instrumental in his prosecution and the future of Guatemala. Um, so let me just show you a bit of the resistance side. Now, this is really just the beginning of what is a major emphasis of our programming this year, which is activism in film. Reflecting what's going on in the independent film world, uh, filmmakers are really banding together, talking a lot how, about how film can be used uh, as really an instrument to counter the demonization of outsiders uh, that's uh, being fostered by a, a radically conservative administration. There's a lot of And we're going to have several discussions about that. The films are going to, um, uh, our film conversations are going to deal with this. For example, our, our talkback, you know, we have talkbacks on um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning at the, um, in the Ashland Springs Hotel at 10 a.m. One of them is going to be themed in the documentary journalism in the age of fake news. Um, the, uh, 
the, the moderator is coming here from Los Angeles. Uh, um, she is the community engagement specialist from Firelight Media, Sonia Childress. Uh, um, among the participants will be the uh, filmmaker of What Lies Upstream. This is one of the films in our program, which, by the way, is um, uh, co-sponsored with the Food Co-op. Uh, it, it starts out, the filmmaker in the film starts out investigating the loss of clean drinking water for 300,000 residents in West Virginia. And then, while he's doing this investigation, uh, uh, the same crisis erupts in Flint, Michigan. Um, the uh, independent filmmaker coming to show this film is the director, Cohen Hoback, really a model of a persevering, one man investigative uh, um, force uh, that really uh, just absolutely fascinating what he uncovers, disturbing, but also just inspiring. Uh, another film we'll be showing um, and whose director will be in this panel is Nobody Speak, Trials of the Free Press. This one starts with the Hulk Hogan uh, sex tape trial against Gawker. That's what the filmmaker was going to make a film about. It leads, just like what lies upstream, to unexpected places. Uh, it goes deeper and investigates uh, Peter Thiel, the billionaire who financed the plaintiff um, in order to bring down Gawker. That leads to um, Sheldon Adelson, uh, the Las Vegas billionaire, his attacks on the Las Vegas Review Journal, and ultimately to Donald Trump's uh, attacks on the press. The director of that film will be here and on the panel and presenting this film. Uh, his name is Brian Nappenberger. He's been here several times in the past, and I'm thrilled that after premiering at Sundance, he's bringing us his latest. Uh, the next talk back we're showing is going to be filming activists. Uh, a panel of filmmakers who make films about people who are um, political activists. The moderator of that panel uh, coming here from the International Documentary Association, also in Los Angeles, uh, is Carrie Lozano. Uh, one of the films related to that section is City of Joy. This is about a camp in the Congo um, where rape victims find refuge. And it's about the three activists who started it. Uh, one of them is uh, a Congolese doctor, um, Dennis Mukwege, and another is the playwright, Eve Ensler, who some of you may know from uh, her writing The Vagina Monologues. Um, the third and the most charismatic uh, activist of this trio is um, Christine Schuller de Schreiber, um, a Congolese human rights activist. And again, I'm very pleased to say that she is coming to uh, this festival to present the film. Another film uh, in this group is Acts and Intermissions, also a film about an activist, but a historic activist, um, Emma Goldman. Uh, this is a film, this is an experimental documentary, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a taste of it, that explores the resurgence of protest in the 20th century through a refracted observation of the life and works of the anarchist revolutionary Emma Goldman. The film is, it's a kind of, this film excited me a great deal when I saw it. Um, I say, uh, I'll give you a taste of it, it may not be for everybody. For some of you, uh, I think you'll be as thrilled as I am. But a filmmaker who's utilizing the full range of cinematic expressiveness, contemporary footage, archival footage, stage footage, um, text on screen. Here, take a look at the movie.
States, uh, really one of the most innovative films that uh, came along, uh, of course, this year. Now, our very special opening night film is going to be Dolores, a film that premiered at the Sundance Film Festival um, this year. Uh, Dolores Huerta is the Cal co-founder of the United Farm Workers. Uh, she's one of the 20th century's most defiant feminists, and she fought tirelessly along Cesar Chavez, alongside Cesar Chavez for racial and labor justice. Uh, but like, like so many powerful women of her era, uh, Dolores and her advocacy have been sidelined and diminished, and this film really rectifies that historic neglect. Um, I can tell you uh, that um, one of the guests we have coming for that show is this filmmaker, Peter Bratt. He made a film a few years ago um, with his brother, Benjamin Bratt, uh, called Follow Me Home, a wonderful feature film. And he's been uh, well known for uh, a long time as being key to the um, a San Francisco film scene. Well, Peter Bratt has just moved to Ashland, Oregon. <laughs> And it's just a sign that many of you know Ashland being voted one of the best places to live and work as a filmmaker. Um, more and more major filmmakers are coming here and I'm really pleased that we're able to connect with them and call attention to their work. He'll be here, uh, plus another special guest. So um, let's, let's hold that for now. Uh, okay, now I'm just going to go on to some of the awards we're giving uh, this year. Uh, the first is the Prime Award, and last year, some of you may remember, we gave it to um, uh, Barbara Hammer. Uh, this award is given to a filmmaker who's made uh, important contributions to LGBTQ awareness uh, and, and, and uh, uh, gay and lesbian filmmaking. Our awardee this year is Jenny Olson. She is a filmmaker, a queer film archivist as well, and an activist. Um, she's, she's, as a filmmaker, we're going to show one of her films, uh, a wonderful film called The Royal Road, uh, which is an experimental landscape film about the, excuse me a second, about the, um, okay, uh, about, uh, about the, um, Camino Real, the history of San Francisco, and uses Hitchcock's vertigo as a jumping off point for the investigation. She's also the producer of a brand new film we're going to be featuring at the Armory called The Freedom to Marry. And um, this film tells the uh, untold story of marriage equality's brilliant mastermind, Evan Wolfson. Uh, and the passionate litigator, Mary Bonanno, from the earliest days of their journey to their final triumph at the U.S. Supreme Court. So let's see a little bit. Watching this one difference in emotional and romantic affection condemn people to a life of isolation and fear. The Supreme Court says it will take up the issue of same-sex
our next award is the AIFF CalFest Fairy Godmother Award. Uh, we are joining with CalFest, the Women's Film Festival in Portland, and the Fairy Godmother Fund in Portland to give this award to a rising uh, woman director. You know, that was an emphasis last year. It's always going to be an emphasis of the festival. And once again, I'm pleased to say that 50% of the films in our program are directed by women. The award this year goes to Rachel Lambert, who will be presenting the film In the Radiant City. It's a film about a man who's haunted by uh, the eyewitness memory of his older brother's unthinkable crime uh, and his own testimony against him. Um, I'm going to quote one of the programmers who's not here, uh, and he's usually here at, um, at Preview Night, Daryl Pierce. Uh, he's one of the evaluators of the film. He wrote, this is well written, acted, produced, Clear care was given to each shot. The sense of natural light and dark reinforces the script, as does the spare use of music, excellent use of silence and conversation, um, pay, conversational pacing. This film really impressed us and Calfest as well, and Rachel Lambert uh, will come here to receive our Fairy Godmother Award. Now, a special guest um, in our film uh, festival this year, and possibly the best looking, uh, <laughs> is uh, Matias Panero. Uh, Matias was born in 1982, and he's already directed seven feature films that play with concepts and characters from Shakespeare and explore the slippery slope between text and image, narrative and reality. Um, uh, many of his films are inspired by Shakespeare's women characters, and so we'll be showing Viola and Rosalinda and his latest Hermia and Helena. Okay, um, I, I'm just going to give you a taste of his work, and we have a trailer for Viola. of expanded cinema. Uh, um, by expanded cinema, I mean films and works that go beyond the movie theater, that are, it, have interactive and live components. We branched into this next year. We're continuing in this direction this year because so much exciting work is being made uh, in this way by independence. Um, we are going to have, for the second year, a collaboration with the Schneider Museum, an exhibition called Convergence, Digital Media and Technology. And this is a, an exhibition that I co-curated with Scott Melbourne, the uh, director of the Schneider Museum. And it is just some amazing interactive media installations. Um, the, part, the ones that I chose works by Nina Kashidorian and uh, Ken Matsubara, uh, Vanessa Reddick, um, 
and Peter Sarkeesian are uh, from the collection of the uh, George Schnitzer Museum of Art, where uh, I was involved in their acquisition over uh, the past few years. Um, now, one of the featured artists uh, in that exhibition, who is getting special attention from us this year, is Vanessa Rennick. Vanessa is Portland's most renowned experimental filmmaker, although she describes herself as the founder and janitor of the Oregon Department of Cadets. <laughs> uh, we're, we're featuring her in the festival with uh, a program of her short films, um, including uh, um, uh, NLFU, uh, her latest film about uh, the state of Portland's gentrification. Uh, as well, in the exhibition at the Schneider, she's going to be, um, we're going to be showing this, and this is a great example of the kind of media installation uh, that, that takes you beyond the movie theater experience. Here, this is called Medusa Smack. Um, it's basically a jellyfish tent, and you watch the film by lying on the pillows underneath the screen and it is projected on uh, top of you. Uh, I can say um, this film, I mean, it's a, a, a very a meditative experience, uh, partly because of the, the beautiful music that was composed, and Vanessa always works with uh, musicians who create pieces for her works. Uh, Tara Jane O'Neill is a multi-instrumentalist, a songwriter, uh, and visual artist out of Los Angeles, and uh, has collaborated with um, uh, Vanessa for the score for this one, so you'll be able to go between April 5th when this show opens through early June when it closes to see it, but you're going to want to go on Saturday night, um, April 8th, in the middle of the festival, because Tara Jane O'Neill is going to be here and she's going to perform live uh, in the Schneider Museum with Medusa Smack, which we're going to project on the main gallery wall. Anybody who can fit under the tent will be welcome to watch it uh, from that vantage point. Um, uh, Vanessa's also going to show her three screen media installation, Hope and Pray, that night. Now, there are more performances in uh, the festival. I'll just quickly mention Lost Landscapes of Los Angeles by Rick Prellinger. Rick Prellinger is one of the leading, maybe the leading film archivist in the United States. Uh, and he's gathered home movies and Hollywood process shots of Los Angeles. And what he does is, as he shows the film, or makes a live performance, is that he narrates, but he also solicits comments and observations from the audience. So especially if you know LA, I, I, I can't recommend this highly enough. His once lost landscape shows in various cities are part of our uh, legendary. Uh, another uh, group doing a live performance here, a slanty eyed mama. And the show they're showing here is Happy Lucky Good Time. Uh, I'm sorry, Happy Lucky Golden Tofu, Care of the Dragon, Good Time, Fun, Fun Show, the movie. <laughs> Um, and Miss Lady and Mama are a musical performance art duo, actress Kate Rigg and violinist Lyris Hung, uh, and a film was made of their performance by Karen Preston. And when we show the film here at the Armory, it's going to end with a performance. Uh, a short hey, Mama, we're going to the Lime Green Um, 
the, the 80 or so films, the short films, the documentary features, the narrative features. Again, we, I have seven associate programmers who work with me. And the first one to come up is Andrew Gay. Andrew is a professor of film here at SOU. He's also head of the board of SOFAM, Southern Oregon Film and Media. And he's one of the programming team of the festival. So now to talk about the shorts and local programs, Andrew Gay. Which would finally call me a programmer. Usually at the meetings, they call me the little junior programmer. <laughs> this is my first year. And I All right, so I'm here to talk about shorts. And as I tell my students, if you're ever sort of nervous about going to a film festival, the best place to start is the shorts programs. Because you kind of think of it as like a cinematic sample, right? Uh, a flight of films, if you will. It's a great place to go and Kind of try a few different flavors, a few different, a few different tastes. If you if, if one isn't to your liking, it's already right, short, and the next one is going to be amazing. So uh, without further ado, let me bring up some of the short programs we're going to be looking at. First of all, we have uh, a program by Mark Shapiro, who's a familiar presence at AIFF. Uh, he has curated a program of adventurous animated films by the talented artists employed by Leica in Portland. Leica is the company that produced Coraline, which many of you uh, probably know is set here in Ashland. Uh, also, this year they had the Oscar-nominated Kubo the Two Strings. Uh, the, these are films made by the artists themselves. These are the artists and independent work. And so these aren't necessarily films for kids. Um, these are more for adults. If you are looking for more kid friendly fair. We have KidFlix, an animation program uh, for children that is from the New York Children's International Film Festival. This is the second year in which we've taken this package of the best animated films from around the world suitable for kids three and up. All right, next we have CineSpace. Uh, this is the second year we have Seven Space as well. Uh, this is an uh, annual film competition is sponsored by NASA and Houston, and Houston Cinema Art Society, which invites filmmakers to remix footage from the NASA archives. So all of the different footage of space and launches and things like that are made available to filmmakers to do with what they please. The top films in this program were selected by legendary indie director Richard Linklater. This is also a great family program and will screen on Saturday morning. Uh, NASA is sitting down with guests, a great speaker, Carlos Fontana, okay. uh, to introduce the program and speak in local schools on April 6th and 7th. And you give a These are familiar programs for anyone who has been to a festival before. We uh, are the programmers selected from over 500 short films uh, submitted uh, for these three programs. One of the uh, short docs that I'd like to point out here is uh, A Thousand Mothers, which was directed by Kim Shelton, who is also the director of the AIFF hit The Welcome. And with one of the producers is our own very beloved Joanne Feinberg. <coughs> this film is about a, a Buddhist monastery that provides a home and religious training for orphan girls. Part of a short program called Finding Refuge, featuring films that show us what it means to be in search of a safe place. And we have a little trailer here. There's we had a, there's a little bit of a playback issue. It's, it's a little jittery, but it is the film itself is. Amazing.
le hemos caído ya.
So I don't have my cool Richard Herskowitz glasses, but I have a little imitation here because this writing is so tiny. Um, I'm here to talk about the documentary features and competition. I know a lot of you uh, know that the history of the film festival, we just really um, present a lot of incredible documentary films. And I know that's a, an interest for a lot of film goers, uh, myself included. First slide I'm going to show you here is a film called Sacred, which is shot around the world by 40 filmmaking teams. Sacred immerses the viewer in an exploration of spirituality across cultures and religions. At a time when religious hatreds dominate the headlines, this film explores faith as a primary human experience and shows how people turn to ritual and prayer to navigate the milestones and crises of life. Super 
excited to say that both Nanfu and Dylan will be here for Q and A. It's just a really incredible film. Next we have Abacus, Small Enough to Jail. This is from Cartoon with Steve James, who also directed Hoop Dreams and Life Itself. This comes the saga of Thomas Sung and his family-run bank in New York's Chinatown. So in the wake of that 2008 financial crisis, Abacus was the only U.S. bank, okay, not Goldman Sachs, not J.P. Morgan, not Citibank, they were the only bank to face uh, criminal charges for mortgage fraud. So it's just, yeah, this is like, you know, this. <laughs> you want to see that. Sorry about the entire community. No matter what you do, be it the little guys out of the vegetables, or a bank that's doing business. And tell Mr. Song, I'm glad to pick on you, because you'll find out.
Jennifer Brea is a Harvard PhD student about to marry the love of her life when she's struck down by ME, or chronic fatigue syndrome, as it's more commonly known, and she can barely move. She grabs a camera to film her darkest moment. She connects from her bed by Skype and Facebook to others in the same situation. I mean, this is like incredibly intimate, and, and uh, for me, I, I didn't know very much about the, the syndrome. I really um, learned a lot from this. So this is just another film that connects with our activism theme this year. It uh, recently played at South by Southwest and received a standing ovation. Just... Score, a film music documentary. This documentary offers an inside look at the work of Hollywood's most accomplished composers, including John Williams, uh, Quincy Jones, Bill Conti, and Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails. Uh, and it's, so it's from how they design and assemble um, the music that elicits powerful emotions from movie audiences. Here's a look at the trailer. One thing that we all understand that we don't understand. Music has a tremendous driving power within the narrative of any film. Oh. Okay. Oh. Visually, when you add music, it becomes something else. It's a whole different experience. The score is the heartbeat of the film. So much of it is about it's all about intuition. You realize it's power of the music. We can make you feel everything we want you to feel. Don't believe me, you realize film music can be as great as the concert of the Thomas Newman, his music is just so eloquent. Hans Zimmer revolutionized what we do. We have to go shake it up, we have to go and reinvent. For months and months it really feels like you're going to fail. Proving yourself is a great force. There is a chemical high. Pirates, it's like Led Zeppelin, they were the orchestra. What the audience really feel doesn't matter how they get that. It's whether it's got substance. Standing on the podium and hearing it for the first time. I guess it's like seeing your child for the first time being born. Film music is the spot of music of today. How do you make the audience feel like they're coming home? Their mind is connected to this dot. Film music has changed. Very rad. There's so many events that's going on. It's so visceral. It's incredibly powerful. You can't say enough about how exciting that is. slash programmer, 
slash Judy Plavenger. which means you get to vote for them. Um, the first one is Cortez, and uh, this is about a talented but self-involved musician with a failing album and canceled tour who goes in search of an old girlfriend in a beautiful town of Cortez, New Mexico. Uh, this is directed by Cheryl Nichols and written by Aaron Shiver, and they are also in the film. They are a real-life couple. They will real-life be here. And Aaron's son is also in the film, as is the wonderful Judith Ivy. And I'm from off the cliff. I was more of a hill, actually. It was like a really steep hill. I think it goes faster in real life.
be miserable, not yours. I can be miserable just as good as you can. who have blockbuster performances by blockbuster actors. The first up is Strange Weather, which, uh, in which Holly Hunter gives another one of her amazing performances um, as a woman trying to come to terms with the suicide of her son. She takes a road trip through the South with her best friend. This is the newest film from director Catherine Diekman, um, who aimed and succeeded in creating a film with characterizations of women you don't often see starring in films, middle-aged women. And Catherine will be here to present the film. We're very excited. And last but not least, you all know that face, uh, that is the amazing Sam Elliott, who gives a tour de force, a tour de force performance uh, in The Hero. He plays a Western star whose best work is long behind him. It also stars Nick Offerman, Laura Prepon, Kristen Ritter, and the beautiful Catherine Ross, who, as you probably know, is Mr. Elliot's wife. And a clip. Nice to meet you. Um, sorry, I forgot your name. Lee. Right. Lee. I said the memory was the second thing to go. What <laughs> was the first? I can't remember. <laughs> I didn't see you each other. We were on a TV show together. Doesn't you ever heard of? It's called Captain Rock. <laughs> Lee was the lead. Ben Horn, a gunslinger. Whoa. I was a cocky kid who sold the wrong man's horse. <laughs> you mean you had a real job once? Yeah. I had a wife too, so did he. Now we just have each other. Well, nice to meet you, Lee. Believe it or not, that was Nick Offerman in the hoodie. <laughs> and now Richard will tell you about some very exciting special guests. Um, I'm going to talk about some of our major awardees and wrap up this program. Um, the context for this is the emphasis that we are putting this year and um, uh, help always on indie classics. As part of our emphasis on independent film history, we want to call attention to the pioneers and classics of independent filmmaking. And, um, the first film I'm going to talk about is a classic rock and roll film that has been more buried than uh, almost any other uh, uh, classic film uh, and so deserves revival. And that film is Cocksucker Blues. Um, some of you may have seen bootlegs of this film. Uh, I had the privilege to see it on a screen at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. And I'm going to share this privilege. Um, the film is allowed to be shown four times a year, um, uh, and this is an agreement with Mick Jagger. Uh, it's of the, um, uh, the, the Exile on Main Street tour, and it was directed by Robert Frank, the great photographer of the Americans and the director of the beat classic, Paul My, da Paul My Daisy. Um, he made this amazing document with incredible performance footage and um, fairly scandalous behind-the-scenes footage that led to its uh, being as restricted as it became. We're able to show it because, uh, with special permission from the Robert Frank Film Archive and the director of that archive, uh, Marion Luntz, will be here to present the film at the Armory. Uh, and this is a rare opportunity, as, as you can tell. Uh, now, um, our Grove Award this year is going to Alex Cox. Now, Alex Cox 
some of you may know, is the director of the, in the classics, a Repo Man, Sid and Nancy, Walker, others. I don't know how many of you know that he has been living uh, in his years in Colstein, Oregon, just below us. Um, you, you'll have, you, could, you should rent uh, Repo Man and um, uh, Sid and Nancy if you haven't seen it. We're going to instead focus on Alex's passion for Westerns. He's one of the most knowledgeable people in the world about Westerns, and that's what we're going to emphasize with him this year. Uh, we're going to do the world premiere of his latest film, Tombstone Rashomon. And this is a film based on years and years of research by Alex on people's divergent perspectives on the gunfight at the OK Corral, the Wyatt Earp, that holiday. Um, uh, Alex Cox uh, also made this on a very, very low budget with student uh, filmmakers uh, helping him uh, and also some uh, terrific crew uh, in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and I'm very proud that we'll be premiering this at the Ashland Street Cinema. Alex is also going to join in a conversation after our presentation at AASC, Ashland Street Cinema, of the restored version of Robert Altman's McCabe and Mrs. Miller, uh, one of the great uh, film classics. Um, who he's going to be in dialogue with afterwards is this guy, Phil Thomas. Now, some of you may recognize Phil uh, if you've been to the uh, Tashi Choing Temple in the Colstein Valley. He's the man who, who was uh, most responsible for building that temple, and, and he's been very, very devoted to it in recent years. But many people do not know that he, in fact, was the art director of McCabe and Mrs. Miller before he moved here, and several other films. So Phil and Alex will be in conversation about McCabe and Mrs. Miller after that screening. Finally, our Lifetime Achievement Award. Now, the person we're giving the award to, actually, you know, Alex Cox is British. The person we're giving this award to this year, everybody seems to think is British, but in fact, he grew up in Klamath Falls, James Ivory. He, in fact, still has a home there. And, uh, he will, and he returns there uh, every summer. And luckily for us, he also comes to Ashland. Uh, you may have sat next to him. He comes to OSF Productions uh, to, to check that out. Um, I'm very pleased that he's coming to our festival to receive our Lifetime Achievement Award. You know him from uh, Room with a View. It's so many um, Remains of the Day, so many other great, great films that he made with uh, the producer Ismail Merchant. He's still making films, but we're going to feature first um, the 30th anniversary screening of Morris. Uh, let me just say something about this. This is um, a film that was really way ahead of its time in the representation of, of homosexuality on screen. It's being revived uh, this year. We're going to add something to this program, which is uh, to show you how active J uh, Jim Ivory still is. Um, we're going to have a, um, a five minute clip from the new film that was the sensation of the Sundance Film Festival this year. It's not opening until the fall. It's called Call Me By Your Name, directed by Luca Guadagnino, with a script based on a script by James Ivory. Um, Sony Classics has presented that clip. Um, they, were, they were sorry they couldn't allow us to show the whole film, but the head of Sony Classics, Michael Barker, asked could he come to Ashland to present the Lifetime Achievement Award to James Ivory. And that will happen on Sunday night at our awards night ceremony. Uh, the second film by uh, Jim Ivory will be showing is How It Ends, um, uh, based on the novel, like several of his films by Ian Foster, starring Anthony Hopkins and Vanessa Ray. Raven is the 25th anniversary of How It's End. Let me just say that the third program that, that James Ivory is going to be involved in is our third talkback this year on the subject of cinematic literature. And James Ivory at Ashland Springs Hotel is going to be joined by uh, Matias Panera, uh, who made all those films, as, as you saw, inspired by Shakespeare, and who we have moderated that talk back is Bill Rausch, the artistic director of the Shakespeare Festival. So that's it for uh, this uh, orientation to our program. And uh, there's much more uh, you can read about in depth online on our website starting tomorrow. And uh, you can also start picking up our catalogs, um, which are available at the office and around town Friday. You've got your preview guide so you can start exploring. Um, 
And now just before uh, we leave, I just ask you to stick around because we're going to do uh, the raffle and I'm going to bring to the stage uh, one of our longtime board members who recently came back onto our board, uh, Pamela Nagy. Good evening, everyone out there in the dark. We're happy that you're here this evening. I want to thank Richard, uh, your incredible programming team, amazing staff for assembling an exciting program for our 16th annual festival. The theaters will fill up, film goers will be inspired and engaged in provocative conversations, and Ashland will be buzzing for five days. We as an organization cannot survive on memberships, grants, and ticket sales alone. Many of you who have purchased raffle tickets tonight will be announcing those winners in just a few moments. But another way to support our organization in a significant way is by purchasing a bottle, or two, or six, or a case of our 2014 Cabernet Franc, created by Eric Weisinger of Weisinger Family Winery, and the Moore family of Quill Run Vineyard South Stage Cellars. Bottles are priced at $35 each. 100% of the proceeds benefits AIFF. 100%. So you can sip, you can savor, and you can support our organization. We have 35 cases that we'll be selling, and the wine will be available for purchase at Ashland Wine Cellar. A tasting is set for this Thursday from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Another tasting will happen the first Friday of the month, and we'll be providing you with more information about future tastings on our website. You can purchase this wine from Ashland Wine Cellars at any time, and again, we thank you for your interest in helping us in that regard. I want to make sure that we are very clear in thanking all of you, businesses and sponsors and grant organizations, in-kind donations, and the over 350 volunteers that make this festival possible. We very much want to keep this gem of AIFF alive and to continue to bring so many filmmakers and hospitality that we provide that has earned us the recognition of one of the 50 coolest film festivals. So if there are those of you, in addition to what you've already done for us, that have someone that you want to pass our way for an individual donation or other ways that you can support us, we are happy to have a conversation over noble coffee or certainly sip our Cabernet Franc to have that discussion with you. So on behalf of the board, the Emeritus Board, our staff, our volunteers, we thank each of you for being here this evening. We look forward to seeing you all at the film festival beginning April 6th. Thank you so much, and I'm Bruce, and I'll put some So as Bruce is coming, we'll also have some board members that are out there with sign-up sheets, so if you're interested, we're happy to sign up for plenty of for wine, and we'll contact you in the future. All right. All right. Hi everyone, if you bought a raffle ticket, you should get it out right now. Okay, look at it. House lights would be nice. Can we get some house lights? For people to be able to see their numbers. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Alright, we have three raffle prizes to give away. Third prize, 100% organic, gluten-free, vegan, AIFF baseball cap. <laughs> A bottle of the AIFF 2014 Cabernet Franc. And our first prize, two tickets to the AIFF opening night match. All right, so we're gonna do those in uh, number three, number two, number one. I feel like it's raw. All right, baseball cap. Two, five, Five, six, one, eight. Hey, you're right there, I see it. Let me run the baseball guy out there. Very nice. Second. 
a bottle of the Cabernet Franc. <laughs> Two, five, five, six, three, three. Who oh, right there? Last up, two tickets to the opening night match. Four, four, zero, zero, eight, seven. Way, way up in the back. Congratulations. Thank you all very much. We'll see you at the festival.